Welcome to Strike a Pose, the web series from Sideshow in which three contestants battle it out in a six-scale figure posing competition. Each contestant will be given 12 minutes to hit the best pose that they can. When the time's up, they'll all three be judged in three categories, creativity, composition, and character. The contestant with the best overall score wins. Let's meet our contestants. First up is Michael Brosman. Next is Miss Sinister. Your clothes are black. And last but not least is Norm Chan. Wait, 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 wait. Hello, Michael. Welcome to Strike a Pose. How are you today? I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for having me here. This is a dream. Oh, thanks so much for being on the show. Really, really appreciate your time. So um, talk to us a little bit about how you think your background is going to benefit you today on the show. The reason I'm going to win today is because here I am in my workplace. This is my workplace, right? So, you know, I I, I love and uh, care for this stuff. So that's going to aid me and take me across the finish line first. One sympathizes. Yes, yes. Your sanctum sanctorum, if you will, right? Exactly. Hello, Sin. Hello. How are you doing today? Welcome. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, your background, as I understand it, is, is in cosplaying. Um, talk to us a little bit how you think that uh, what you do, I'm assuming that you prepare your own costumes in, in many cases. T talk to me a little bit how you think that that might benefit you on the show today. Well, unlike my predecessor here, I like to let my work speak for me. So as a cosplayer who has gone to many conventions uh, and done a lot of photos, I have a feeling that actually being the character might be uh, a one-up on you, buddy. Norm, welcome back. Thank you. I'm so nervous, but also really excited to be here. No, oh, you have no reason to be nervous. You're an old hand at this sort of thing. This is your second time on the show. Uh, I believe, last, as I recall, last time you won handily in the competition. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> it's like the return of a Jeopardy champion to strike a pose. So, yeah. Um, do you? How do you feel? Do you feel like your experience with the previous episode that you were on might benefit you in some way? Oh well, not only am I a returning contestant, also a new parent here, and so in manipulating a infant, you know, basically a, a quarter scale human changing diapers, I feel like that's giving me a lot of practice lately in posing. I had no idea. Congratulations. That's exciting to hear. I'm really, really happy for you. Okay, thanks again to everybody for being on the show. Now, is everybody ready to find out what figure you'll be posing today? Break that box onto your table, rip it open, treat it like it's Christmas. Do it with gusto. Terry, you have no idea how difficult it was not to open this box. Oh, believe me, I do, my friend. What do we have here? Oh, wow. <laughs> this is the Batman Beyond six scale figure from Batman Arkham Knight, the video game. It is the latest figure from that game that Hot Toys has brought to collectors, and in my opinion, this one comes out at the top. I really appreciate the range of motion of the figure. You can hit so many great poses with it. On top of that, it has excellent cut to the suit, great looking sculpt, awesome design of the reimagination of the Batman Beyond suit. And I really, really love this wide range of accessories. So there's so many things that our posers are going to be able to do with this figure. Can't wait to see who wins. Without further ado, let's let them do their thing. Okay, Michael, let's start with you. Why do you think you will be the best at posing this Batman figure? Uh, two reasons. I'm so lame. I got a PS4 about 12 months ago and was so far behind that I just played Arkham Knight about four or five months ago. So I feel fresh. And then also, I'm going to get a prop. So I was fortunate enough to be the uh, content producer for this uh, Warner Brothers release of Batman Beyond. I got to interview Bruce Tim and the people who created this series, and we created some, you know, original content which you can see here in this box set. So I actually know something about Batman Beyond. Wow! Well done, Michael. I feel like that might actually give you a bit of a leg up. Let's uh, let's move on down the line, Sin. Talk to us. I know you've got a little bit of a history with the DC characters. Uh, what makes you the front runner for this? Well, not only did I watch this show when it came out, uh, along with the other animated series, uh, I actually know someone who built this suit and it like fully lights up. It's very, very impressive. And 
I'm just excited to pose this, honestly. You'll get your chance. It's coming soon enough, I promise. Norm, you have a wide and varied history in the geek culture world. Uh, talk to us about what your experience with Batman brings to the table for you today. Uh, I've taken a lot of photos of cosplayers cosplaying as Batman. So that's you know positioning the camera, moving the angles, always posing them in real life. Uh, I'm unfamiliar, of course, uh, though, with this interpretation of Batman Beyond. I actually have not unlock the skin in the uh, in, in the Arkham games um, so I'm just excited to get this open I already see it, unlike uh, like I pointed out before it's not like the TV show it's uh, a little more tactical and I'm really curious what that brings to the character nailed it yeah very much so all right yeah everyone the boxes are awesome but what's really really cool is what's on the inside so what you're waiting for open those things up take everything out and get it on the table in front of you let's see what it comes with all right each of our posers has in front of them an identical Batman Beyond six scale figure from Batman Arkham Knight. I feel compelled to point out to all of you that that figure has over 30 points of articulation. So the more of those points of articulation that you use, the more dynamic this pose is going to look and the better your score will be. So try to attack as many of those as you can during your posing session. Without further ado, let's commence with the posing. Is everybody ready? Yep. All right, excellent. Let's begin then in three... Two, one, go. The very first thing I'm noticing is there's a separate, like, mouthpiece? Is that what this is? Yes. Yes, it is. Do you recommend taking off the head to swap that out? Mm -hmm. Deal, dealer's choice. I just accidentally discovered how the cape goes on by what I thought was breaking the figure. I believe that's the very definition of a happy accident. Sin, how are, you, how are you feeling down there? Uh, I will see how I feel when I get to the cape, because I was just wondering how that attached myself. Your look is one of intense scrutiny. Yes. Well, there's so many accessories that I figure I should spend the first few minutes figuring out which one I want to use, and then the rest should be, in theory, easier. That's a compelling strategy. Among the cool accessories that come with this figure, you'll find that there are several, several hands, eight in total, uh, each one is pretty much item specific. Um, there are, of course, there are some that can be used with multiple weapons, for instance, but there is a particular hand that needs to be used with this one, and I think that's this guy right here. Um, there are grapples that come with, uh, the, with this thing that can plug into the grappling gun, and that's really awesome. I can't uh, wait to see if somebody chooses to go with those. But I think the key feature of this, and that which makes it the, challenge, the most challenging part of the figure, are the wings themselves. Now, we allowed the posers to construct the wingsuit, so to speak, at the beginning of the show before we actually started filming. Uh, that way, if they chose to use it, they could just slap it on without having to worry too terribly much about um, taking time off of their posing session for construction. Having said that, since we did go through all the, uh, all the trouble of showing these guys how to put this thing together and letting them do it beforehand, I think I'm going to go ahead and add a point to the score of whoever chooses to use those wings. Just seems only right and fair, right? I'm a bit concerned for Sin right here. It doesn't look like she's feeling the pressure at all. It's like she's taking her time. She's playing with all the different gadgets. She's uh, familiarizing herself with the character, I suppose, and with the figure. But this is really eating a lot of time for her. She's gonna have a really hard time here. You know, it's, it, it's weird, but it kind of looks like Norm is struggling a little bit with the cape. For some reason, it doesn't look like he's able to make it fit onto the back. I don't know what's up with that. It'll be interesting to see if he's able to work it out. Michael's experience with Batman Beyond is a bit of a bonus for him. Uh, you can see that he's experimenting with the gadgets. That can be a big plus with what he seems to be doing with it. Big points for character if he can do that successfully. Stop posing. We've reached that point in the competition in which we throw you guys a curveball. We're going to take Sideshow's Mr. Freeze premium format figure and freeze him in a 150 pound block of ice. Then we're going to thaw him out and see if he makes it out in one piece. Mike, looks like you're doing something really, uh, really awesome over there. Uh, hopefully, you we're hoping. Feeling pretty good about it? I feel pretty good about it. I, uh, 
I feel like since this is the Batman who who can fly, that uh, you know maybe I should utilize that. Ooh, we'll careful! Don't give away too much. We'll see if I can figure don't it out. Take my mental ideas. <laughs> Stop stealing from sin. Or the logo on the on the box art, you know. You're at seven minutes, everyone. <laughs> mm, that's right. I forgot how nervous this makes me. <laughs> You know, it's weird. We're like five minutes into this posing competition and there's not a lot of conversation going on. Usually by this time, you'd expect at least a little bit of smack talk, but I'm going to choose to interpret that silence as meaning that everybody's just completely focused on rocking out their best pose possible. Okay, everyone, stop oh, no. posing. Hands off your figures. Set it down. It feel like five minutes. We've reached that point in the competition in which we throw you guys a curveball. That curveball is, you must use, in any way, at least one battle angle. Okay, begin posing again in three, two, one, go. One of my uh, nightmare scenarios for doing this is swapping left and right hands and not noticing. So every time I'm plugging in, I'm making sure the thumbs are in the right place. I've been doing this for, I don't I've lost track of how many years, at least a decade, and I still have those moments. Now you might be asking yourself, Terry, why did you choose the Batarang for the curveball? There were so many different things that you could have gone with. Well, the reason for it is because it would have been very easy for me to go with the wings, say for instance, or with one of the guns. The Batarang is so ubiquitous in Batman lore, it's in pretty much every incarnation of the character, comic book, television, film, uh, video game, what have you. Uh, that I just feel like it has to be included in pretty much any pose um, that you do of Batman. Except for this one. Definitely not this one. Norm, I'm just going to say, without revealing what you're doing to anybody else on the show, I just want to say that you're making me dizzy. Okay, this is exciting. It looks like Norm is going inverted with his figure. I don't think I've... I think I've seen this happen one time before on Strike a Pose, and it was to great effect. So it'll be interesting to see how he's able to make this work. Four minutes, 15 seconds, everyone. Miss Sinister, how are we doing over there? Uh, I'm all thumbs when it comes to keeping this cape on. I don't know why. The sweat from my hands is getting on the gloss black. So many shades of black. <laughs> Two and a half minutes, everyone. Now originally Sin's waist support was colliding with the cape and making it ride really high, but she's just figured out that she can apply the waist grabber from the side. That completely eliminates that obstacle. That's really, really gonna elevate her composition. Two minute warning, everyone. Coming up on the end here, and I'm kind of struggling to interpret what action Michael's figure is supposed to be taking. I'm really looking forward to the story he has to tell me. 60 seconds, everyone. <laughs> I told you my delighted giggle sounded a lot like my evil laugh. <laughs> All right, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands off figures, everyone. Drop them. Not literally. Don't do that. Hey, Michael. Let's uh, turn that uh, turn that bad boy around. Show me what you were able to pull off there. All right. So this pose, I can't take a uh, hundred percent credit for because you know the thing about the Batman uh, Beyond and uh, the fact that he can fly. A lot of the logos kind of mimic that, and to me, that's the quintessential you know Batman pose where he's kind of just lifting off. Like the idea here is he's just he's just uh, you know he's got his sights up. He's looking up towards the sky. And he literally just left the ground a few seconds ago. I love that the character can be fully in the air, you know, in flight. That's such a cool thing. Um, and he's got a batarang at the ready, of course, because uh, that's what he's going to throw before he goes to his uh, rifle. And then in the thing I wanted to include was... Uh, in the Arkham Knight game, there's a lot of times where there are toxins released into the city and Batman is susceptible to that. So, of course, he's got to have the gas mask on. Yeah, I was always a really big fan of that look. That's what, That was one of the things that really set uh, the character apart from previous incarnations of Batman. And uh, one of the many things that drew me to him, as well as what you talked about earlier with the reflection of the bat symbol in the wings themselves. So, yeah, cool stuff. Great looking pose, Mike. Thanks. Thank you. Miss Sinister. How'd you feel about that? Oh, pretty good. I've actually only used 
figures with stands that are uh, like the feet have a place to go. Uh, so it was really neat working with something that not only held them, suspended them in air, but also one that was flexible. Yeah, I've always been a big fan of dynamic flight stands. So uh, yeah, any chance to implement one, I try to take it. So I did something oh, look at that, that was uh, trying to... I tried to incorporate a couple 45 degree angles here. One leg extended back, one arm back with a batarang. Uh, maybe he just cut himself free from something and that's him flying like basically directly at the camera. But I thought it looked pretty interesting from a couple of different angles. That left straight off of a comic book panel. Yeah, yeah very cool. I could see that on a cover. I could see that anywhere. Yeah, awesome. Norm, returning champion. Look at that. You went all inverted and stuff. Um, talk to me. Tell me the story that's happening here. Yeah, so I, I think for decision, I, I, as I said, I want to know what accessories I want to use. There's so many. I'm unfamiliar with them, so I just stuck with the standard the grappling hook, um, which then made me think, when he's going to use a grappling hook, how can I best use this dynamic flight stand? I tried the cape. I, I, I like the cape, but I also like the just the, the tactical look without the cape. You can see all the straps and the armor pieces. The silhouette really reads well. Um, and so when would he not have the cape? So maybe, maybe flipping it upside down. Maybe he's jumping off a building. It's great that you brought that up because one of the things that I found most compelling about Batman Beyond was the fact that Batman was running around without a cape um, being apparent a vast majority of the time unless he was actively in flight mode or gliding or actually coming in for a landing or what have you so seeing you address that is actually really is really an awesome idea not succumbing to the temptation of, of using the wings um, yeah it's a great looking pose man I like what you've done thanks creativity composition character The winner is Judging is complete. The scores have been tallied. The results are in. Now, before I announce the winner, I want to say that we're beginning with this episode of Strike a Pose. A new caveat that we've thrown in without anybody's knowledge, and that is that prior to the show, it was determined that a particular piece that, if employed, would grant an additional point to each and every contestant that used that particular accessory. And in this particular case... I felt it was a gimme because it is such a glorious addition and unique to this character. It was the wings. So. Yes. All right. With that having been said, is everybody ready to find out who won today's competition? Oh. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Without further ado, then, uh, the winner with a combined total of 26 points is Miss Sinister. Oh. Yes. Congratulations, yeah. Sim. You've unseated our returning champion, Norm. Everybody did fine jobs today, but really, that, that pose really knocked it out of the park. Um, I think what really did it for me was that it legitimately is something that I would definitely want to see on display on my shelf, and I would never, ever change it. It's really that strong of a pose. Thank you. All right, now that our winner is being announced, I'd like to go one-on-one -on -one with each of our contestants and talk a little bit about their poses and what may or may not have led me to add or subtract points from the poses that we see here on the table in front of them today. And we're going to start with Michael. Hey, Michael. How's it going? 
Condolences, man. It was a really str- it was a really strong submission. Um, but uh, really, the sins was just so out of the park that it's going to be that it was really really tough for anybody to compete with. So, looking at your pose here, um, I can see I saw everything that you were doing there, and it's it's really like a strong start. This is exactly the kind of situation that I would call a strong start. Like if you had like maybe five more minutes to develop it a little bit, I think that it could have been a much stronger submission. In this particular case, I think you were a victim of the clock uh, more than anything else, and that just wound up costing you the day. But what, the one thing I would call out is that that knee that you have bent, I would probably have bent that a little bit more. Just really exaggerate that, like he's like he's a basketball player going for a going in for a classic rendition of a layup. Just really using that leg to just lift himself upward, give him that just a little bit of extra momentum. And that exaggeration probably applies to every other limb in the pose there. Um, the uh, the gun, just kind of like sitting there idly like he's casually pointing it, just I would have like taken that up and just really had it just pointing upward, like carrying that energy and that direction that we see that he's, go- that he's going from the position of his torso, just really accentuating that. And the same go- holds true for the Batarang. Just like having like he's just getting, he's fully extended and he's getting ready to let go of that batarang just all these all these things combined would have been exactly the kind of things that would have taken that pose over the top and just made it a real real prize winner i will spend three hours implementing your changes later this evening (laughs) hey norm hey terry uh this was very very hard for me because uh because you're a you're a very accomplished figure poser and i've seen a lot of what you've done with your your own six scale collection on your channel and whatnot, and and what you did in your previous appearance on the show, uh, and what you've done here, everything that I said throughout the course of the of the contest was really really on point. I liked where where you're uh, the theory of it all, where you were coming from, especially as you said, insofar as the employment of the cape is concerned. I think this might be an instant where the caveat might have actually the, um, the the curveball that I threw at the five minute mark might have been something that just kind of upset your pose just a little bit. As you said when you were talking about it, you could see where you tried to get that moment of right when he was really at the peak of his throw. Because of the time constraints again, I just don't think you were fully able to achieve that. I think a lot of the elements work but they just don't work in conjunction with each other. And again, just like I said with Mike, I feel like if you had a few more a few more minutes to just study it and look at it and dissect it, if you weren't racing a clock and with the stress that accompanies that, I think you probably would have really, really nailed this. It was very, very close. Yeah, and I'm gonna continue working on it. <laughs> nice, man, cool, very cool. Sin, once more, I don't know what else I can say regarding this pose of yours. It's um. It is textbook in every in every conceivable way. This is a part where I'm legitimately supposed to be coaching and actually throwing a tip out there, something that I would that I myself would do in order to make it better. And I legitimately don't think that there's anything that I could do. It's an impeccable pose. Um, might be the finest one that I've seen on the show, um, it, certainly in recent memory. And I'm I'm genuinely impressed. So thank you for coming on and 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 gracing us with this here today. Very cool. All right, this seems like the ideal time to let everybody know at home that in previous seasons of Strike a Pose, the winner of the contest has been the sole person to walk home with the figure that they pose. But given the nature of the stay-at-home edition of Strike a Pose, it's probably best that we just go ahead and let all of our contestants keep the figure, wouldn't you say? So instead, the winner, in this case Miss Sinister, will go home with everlasting kudos and never-ending praise. Additionally, Miss Sinister may very well be returning to the show to participate in an all-star tournament at some point in the future. Well, just before Terry gave us the information that uh, we were all going home with this figure, I was I was ready to talk a whole lot of shit about Miss Sinister, but um, I, w- I would like to accept this figure. I'm, I'm not as mad knowing that I can go home with this, so congratulations to Miss Sinister. I can even be gracious and say that that pose, like Terry said, is right off the pages of a comic book. Congratulations. Well, I feel like we're all winners here. Uh, I'm so thrilled to be able to continue having more time with this. Having only the 12 minutes to pose this, I went a little high concept, you know, the high-tech armor, went high concept and didn't pay off this time, but now I can spend my time appreciating the design, using all these different accessories, and yeah, maybe I'll try on that cape after all. Firstly, I just want to say that this was really rad to work with. I think I mentioned before that I am used to posing figures that kind of have a set place to be, and this was just way more fluid and gave me a lot more room uh, for creativity, and I wanted to go big with it, so I'm glad that it paid off, and uh, 
Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Okay, wow. That was a really awesome show. Was really impressed with what everybody was able to bring to the table during the posing session. But it was the action-packed, really dynamic poses of Miss Sinister's pose that took her figure over the top and brought her into the victory lane. And it really illustrates something that's key and a critical element in figure posing in general, especially when it comes to a figure as rich and diverse as Batman, with so many different incarnations to the character insofar as his costume is concerned. When we're talking about something like the Batman Beyond figure, which has a really unique shape to the cape, it's something that you definitely want to bring into the equation. It makes it identifiable, it makes it really stand out on the shelf, and it's something you definitely want to implement going into posing a particular figure. And that's a wrap for this episode of Strike a Pose. Be sure to let us know who you thought won the contest in the comments below. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Be sure to subscribe by hitting the S icon on your screen and click the bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under product info. Thanks for watching and don't forget to let your geek side show.